Whenever technological advances have happened throughout the past, you always hear people in different fields and industries wondering if their job is going to be replaced by a machine. Will the robots take over their jobs? And I think in the past, people in medicine have always felt kind of comfortable that that's not going to happen to them, that their jobs are safe and that machines can't possibly do what we do. But with the new advancements in technology that is coming out now, specifically talking about AI or artificial intelligence, I don't think that those of us in medicine can be complacent with that question anymore. I think that it's time for us to give some serious thought to that question. Are we vulnerable? Can AI take over our jobs? Well, I've done a little bit of reading and research about this topic, and I'm going to tell you what my thoughts and my predictions are. And not only am I going to talk about whether medical providers are safe in general, but whether PAs and NPs are more vulnerable or more safe than physicians. In other words, if medical providers are going to be replaced, is one group going to go first? Hey, it's Michelle with The Medicine Couch. Thanks for joining me today. If you like my channel and you like what I do, I'd appreciate your support by hitting that subscribe button, liking the video, and sharing it with your colleagues who might find these topics interesting. So this is actually the third video in a series I've done about AI in medicine. The first one I did was about how AI can do all of our charting for us. And then the second one is about all the different changes that are likely to happen in medicine due to this incorporation of AI. So if you're interested in those videos, I'll have them linked at the end of this video, and the links are also down below in the description box. I'll just do a quick recap about the abilities that AI already has. AI not only has the ability to, but is already being used in some instances to read imaging like mammograms or chest x-rays. It can read pathology, it can analyze skin lesions. And as we know, robots are already used in surgery. Beyond that, two AI programs have already passed the USMLE exams. It has the ability to scan complex charts, gathering just the pertinent information it needs for the current visit. It can take all of the information inputted and come out with accurate diagnoses and treatment plans and it can write the entire chart note before you even close the door, including putting in all those pesky billing codes that the visit qualifies for. So with AI having the ability to do all of those things, it is not a far-fetched question to ask if our jobs are vulnerable to being replaced by AI. Now I'd have to say that the answer is no, with a caveat. I would have to say that I think that medical providers will be around for at least the next 30 to 50 years, probably even longer. There's a couple of factors that make it likely that it's not going to happen anytime soon. One is the slow speed at which medicine evolves. Other than COVID, when we're faced with something that we have to adapt to very quickly, medicine generally changes kind of slowly over time, and especially when it comes to incorporating new technology. So that's the one thing that's going to slow it down. But the other thing, which is the most important thing, is I think that human beings have a trust factor that is not going to be met by machines and artificial intelligence. So what I mean by that is think about the technology we already have, like self-driving cars. Some people trust them, but I would say the majority of people are not going to get in a car and not at least have their hands on the steering wheel. And what about planes? The technology already exists. We fly drones all over the world. Planes can be operated remotely, but who is going to get in an airplane without a pilot sitting in the seat? I know I'm not, and I would venture to say most of you aren't. Human beings want to have another human being in charge of things. We have a greater level of trust in another human being. We think that they're going to be able to adapt quicker and to handle unusual things that come their way. And I think that we're also nervous about the fact that we know computers and technological systems go down from time to time and they're open to being corrupted. So that barrier for human trust is very high and I don't know when or if it will ever be breached. And the other reason why I think that there will always be a medical provider around 
is that people are very vulnerable when they're sick. You know, when, when you've got something going on that you're facing, you're scared, you want another human being that you feel can empathize with you, that you can discuss things with, and that you feel like is fighting for you and that they're in your corner. Now, I know that there are some providers out there who don't fit that bill, but for the most part, I think most patients have a pretty good relationship with their medical provider. And I don't see that happening with computers and robots, even with the very realistic AI robots that are being developed. So I think that human connection is always going to be desired and is another reason that medical providers will always have jobs. However, I think that the more immediate question and the more pertinent question is which medical providers will survive and thrive in the new era of AI? Will there be room for physicians and PAs and NPs? So let me tell you why I asked that question. Once AI is fully incorporated in medicine, and I think that will probably happen in the next like five to 10 years, there's going to be a dramatic shift in how we spend our days. Can you imagine all of the time that you would have on your hands if you didn't have to do chart review, getting ready for patients to come in, if you could just read a quick synopsis, if you didn't have to write the chart note, which is the biggest time waste, if you didn't have to uh, go through your inbox and interpret lab results and message the patient with the results and follow up, if you didn't have to respond to patient queries, if you didn't have to take triage calls, if you didn't have to do a lot of that busy work, paperwork that comes along with a medical practice, what if you were basically just seeing patients? Plus, how quick would your visits be if you could focus entirely on the patient, get through the HPI and do the physical exam without having to stop and type things in your note and having AI already giving you the most probable diagnoses and treatment options? We would just need to use our medical knowledge and our knowledge of the patient to decide which are the best and most appropriate options for that patient. So if you can get through your patients faster and you don't have all this other busy work, what are you going to be doing with your time? I think a lot of providers may be fantasizing that with all that time, we'll actually get to spend time with our patients to be able to talk to them more, to be able to really understand the root cause of their illnesses, and to be able to work on those lifestyle changes that are really going to make the change in their health. But I think that is just a fantasy. I think we have to operate in the world of reality. And I think that reality is that once administrators see that we have extra time and they've spent all this money on these programs, they're going to want to be bringing in more revenue to the practices, which means that providers are going to start seeing more and more patients. In fact, with AI doing most of the work behind the scenes, I can see providers having to see two to three times the number of patients that they're currently seeing. So each provider will be just as busy, but that provider will be seeing way more patients than they are currently seeing now. So that leads to the question of if we're going to need all of the providers we currently have. And if we're not going to need all of the providers that we currently have and that we're graduating, where are the cuts going to come from? Are they going to cut down numbers by getting rid of PAs and NPs? Or are they going to be getting rid of doctors? Now, I'm pretty cynical about the whole business of medicine. So my bet would be that they're going to keep the cheapest labor. And that would be us, PAs and NPs. If you've got a provider who's making half the salary, but still seeing two to three times the number of patients that they're currently seeing, I think that that would make administration very happy. And so I think that the landscape is going to change for physicians and that it's going to be harder for them to find positions. Now, I could be totally wrong there, and I really hope that I am wrong. I actually think it should be reversed. I think if any providers are going to be gotten rid of, then it should be PAs and NPs. I think that the right move would be to keep your most highly trained and highly educated clinicians. Now, I know that that's a controversial statement that probably ruffles a lot of feathers and a lot of PAs and NPs are, you know, pretty seamed about that comment. But I think as AI is incorporated more and more into medicine and as it learns and grows, which is how these programs are written, 
uh, then it will have no problem mastering the basic essentials of medicine. I think what is going to be really needed are those specialized and highly trained clinicians who will be able to monitor and oversee what AI is doing and to be able to recognize false logic, to identify patterns and things that are not being treated correctly, and to be able to think outside of the box on those more complex cases that is going to be harder for a computer to think through. Now, I'm not saying that there's not PAs and NPs that can do that. I have worked and seen some fabulous PAs and NPs that can run circles around some doctors. But in general, physicians have a greater depth of knowledge. They learn more in their schooling, and they have a wider array of experiences that they encounter on their rotations. I think that those are going to be the skills that are really going to be needed in order to keep oversight on this AI. Now, I don't think that PAs, NPs, or physicians are going to go away entirely. I think that we will still have a mix and that there will be jobs for people. I just don't think there will be as many in the future. But I also think that these changes are going to happen slowly over time, as I said before. There's going to be time for people in each of the professions to see what is happening and what is coming and to be able to make adjustments and or to pivot into some of the new opportunities that are going to be created by AI. There's no doubt in my mind that our professions are going to change in ways that we can't even anticipate, and that is going to include new opportunities. So I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I just think it's something that medical professionals now have to think about when we didn't have to worry about it so much in the past. So while none of us really knows what is going to happen, all we do know for sure is that with the recent technological advancements, there's a brave new world right around the corner, and it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. And don't forget, if you want to watch the first two videos where I go more in depth about how AI is changing medicine, I'm going to have them linked here or they'll be down below in the description box. Again, thanks for joining me. Take care, stay sane, and I'll see you next time on The Medicine Couch. Bye.